what's up guys, JT here. I'm gonna be bringing you a quick update video today. I'm gonna to talk about some of the features that we showed in the trailer, show you some things that got cut from the trailer, and generally talk about the plans moving forward with the release of the game. I'm actually gonna kick straight off with this here, guys, and the first thing I'm gonna show you is the credits tab. That's implemented now. If you are a backer of the game, you'll be on this list. If you do pre-order before the Steam release, you'll also be on there. Over on the play window, the history tab now works, favorites is also implemented, and the own tab will show you the servers that you actually own. The friends tab isn't quite implemented yet, but you will be able to connect with your friends via the Steam overlay. I've actually taken a bunch of footage here. I tried to play through the game a little bit. I got quite a lot of content. I'm actually gonna have some cuts in this video, sort of take you through the day, and really just show you the bits that really I think that you'll, that you'll like to see. One of the first things I'm actually wanted to talk about here is the view distance. Some of you might remember from the stress test that it was set to around a thousand meters. Maybe you've seen it in some video or something. We've actually optimized things. We've combined some terrains in the distance and we've actually managed to get that up to about 10,000 meters now with some performance gains as well, which is, which is always nice. I'm gonna go ahead here and equip an ax. And the first thing I wanna show you on the ax is the inspect readout that we've added. And we've decided to add that because we wanted to give the player some feedback about the item that they have in their hand without breaking the immersion by having UI on the screen. So you can press F and you'll see some information about the weapon you have, whether it's a, a, a gun or a melee weapon. And you might have actually noticed the green highlights on the tree there. We've actually added that because after stress test two, we saw some footage on YouTube and we, we noticed that people are struggling to find where they need to cut on the tree. So we've added those just to give the player a little bit of a cue to, to how to cut the trees down and just to guide them in the right direction. Something else that happens now as well is the ax take damage and dull as you use them. The, the more you use them, the, the blunter they get and the longer it'll take to cut down the tree. And you can use the new crafting system to resharpen them and make them last longer. If you do let it get to 0%, then it'll actually break and then you'll have to salvage the parts from your inventory. As I walk up here, you'll actually notice that I get caught in some bushes and it'll slow you down now as you walk into shrubbery. It'll make noise so that other players can hear it and it'll also attract or deter AI. I'm not actually afraid to admit it guys that I got completely lost before I came over that ridge and saw Union Point Power over there. And that's something also that we really wanted to do with the landmarks in the world where you'd be able to use them as reference points as you navigate around the world and try to find your friends. I'm actually gonna head into town now because I know I'll be able to find a water barrel over there. We didn't wanna make finding water difficult because we feel in this kind of environment it would be pretty easy. What we do wanna do is have the challenge of purifying that water and making it safe to drink. So you can see this water barrel here. You don't actually know if it has water in it before you try to take it. It's a chance system where you walk up to it and, and find out. They, they will refill after it's rained and they are persistent between players. So if, if you take all the water out of it, it won't be there for another player. But like I said, getting that water should be fairly easy. I actually head over into the woods now where we're gonna set up a little bit of a camp and actually show purifying some of that water on a campfire. I'm gonna actually go ahead here and just give all the items for setting up this camp because I really didn't want to find them all. And this is also something that you guys will have access to. If you're a server admin, you'll be able to give yourselves items. You'll be able to give other player items if that's something you want to do. And uh, you can, there's loads of different variants of the give command. You can give single items, you can give items with quantity, or you can, uh, you can look up give and all kinds of different options for that. You can actually see here that I forgot one of the IDs, so I just did try give and then a name, and it will basically look on the system and see what there is to give you that matches that name, and it'll try to give you it. You can see that I actually place a tent now, and that serves as a mobile logout point in the world. If you do use something like this, then you'll sign back in exactly where you did log out, and if you don't, then you'll log back in somewhere near where you signed out. You can see that I'm placing a fire here and I'm just adding some parts to it and we're going to use this after we've shown you the crafting system to actually purify the water and make it safe to drink so that you don't have a chance of getting sick. 
I'm actually showing the new crafting system here now and we added this because we felt that the old system was becoming a little bit clunky with the list the lists were becoming a little bit long and it was becoming hard to find exactly what you wanted to craft so we've added this recipe system where you can assign stuff to the recipe and just find out yourselves if it is actually something that can be crafted we've added this wiki button here as well which will actually open directly to a web page where you can find all the different recipes and just make it kind of easy to to find that and that will open in the overlay uh, the steam overlay as well if that's something that you want that's just an option with all urls in the game in the settings where you can check that on if you want it to open in the steam overlay or off if you want it to open in your regular browser so i'm going to go ahead here and actually craft a tripod and then we'll throw that over the fire and actually boil the water and make it safe to drink you might have seen the cooking system that we've implemented here in the trailer and i just wanted to talk a little bit more about this and how this works basically any surface that is over a fire or a stove or a, a kitchen stove is basically a cooking zone if it's turned on by the electric or in this case the fire that's underneath it and will actually allow you to cook anything that is set as cookable so in this case it's a, a saucepan of dirty water you put it over the fire and after so much time it'll actually boil and give you clean water back you can actually see here i've opened my inventory and i now have a pot of water which is clean and that is safe to drink and won't make me sick here i'm showing the the tab list and this is something that's also new after the stress test just some sort of a go-to area to find some information you can see that you can tag other players with color here which will actually show up next to their ne uh, name tag and there's a bunch of other options there on that drop down a bunch of quick links here which open into the steam overlay again or just straight into a url some other useful information and just generally like a, a quick easy way to find information that you might want i'm actually going to go straight into some uh, server administration stuff right now show you some of the things that you can do as a server admin to manage your server you can see here that i'm typing in clean up and a radius which basically just cleans up all item pickups and interactables within that radius just so that you can keep the world tidy i'm setting myself to to god mode true there so that i can't take any damage uh, tp is also implemented in the game you can tp to coordinates or you can tp player to player or tp yourself to a player or a player to you you can also teleport yourself to spawn points by doing forward slash spawn point and then the number i don't actually show it here but that's that's in as well which you might find useful if you want to set a spawn point or just generally teleport somebody to another spawn point so they can meet up with their friends you can kill other players if they're say griefing or whatever something like that you can mute them in the chat which is persistent and mutes them and definitely they will be able to whisper to administrators you can add to your stats here you can see i add to my hydration stat and you can also do this for other players as well so you would just do forward slash the stat you want to update the name of the player and then the amount you want to increase it or remove it by you can ban people as well uh, unban them all via the the chat and you can also do that via the server panel as well which i'll actually go ahead and show you right now this is the Zelona All Gamer Game Server panel that's been developed for Survive the Nights by Clinton. If you host a server through All Gamer for Survive the Nights, you will actually get access to this panel. You can see here on the main page that you can start and stop your server. And I'm going to go ahead and here and click on my server, and you can see a little bit more information ab about it. You can change the name here, update it, restart it, and things like that. Over on the configuration tab, you can change all of the server's configuration. You, I won't go into too much detail about each of these options, but basically this saves you having to edit text documents and will really allow you to run the server the way that you want to do it. You can change all different kinds of things and you can see I scroll down here and actually show you some of the description of some of the, the options that you'll have access to. Over on the permissions tab, you can see that you can create user groups. User groups work in a hierarchy system 
So the higher they are in the group, the lower permissions that they have. And you can create permissions here. You can assign permissions to those groups. You can also change the chat prefix colors of those groups just down here. And you can also assign what the chat prefix should actually say in game. The next tab is the console. You'll be able to see all your chat messages in here and just keep an eye on how your server's running, any errors that you might need to report to the devs, things like that. The task tab lets you set tasks for the server, like restarts, uh, lets you schedule those for when you want them rather than uh, when they need doing. Ba the backups tab is just for taking a backup of your server database in case of any corruption, anything like that. And the tools tab just has a little utility on it for deleting your database in case you want a clean server. Okay, and we're back in game. I'm actually going to show you guys a few uh, weather states here in the background while I talk a little bit about zombie spawning and the alpha. Uh, these commands that I'm inputting right now, uh, I'm actually forcing the weather. All these states will dynamically happen in the game as you play. Um, server admins will also have access to these commands as well. So as of alpha 1.0, which will be hitting Steam fairly soon, zombies will actually spawn dynamically around the world during the day you won't find them outside they'll generally generally be lurking in houses and just hiding in dark places we've done this because we want to approach the zombies from the perspective that during the day you can spend it preparing for the night during the night zombies will actually spawn outside they'll be more aggressive and they'll actively seek other uh, prey for food and uh, you'll actually have to fend those off more. As for the Steam Early Access, we're really positive at the moment. We're really confident about where the builds are. We're wanting to polish things off just a tiny little bit more. Even though we will be going onto Steam as an Early Access game, we want it to be a fun experience for the people who play. If you want to get involved with the backer testing, then you can pre-order the game through the Humble Bundle and in the coming weeks we're hoping to do tests with the community and really gather information but overall the plan is to be on steam this summer and uh, we're going to really take it from there and continue the development once we hit steam and really make the game awesome i just wanted to show you this last little clip to show something that we've implemented here into the game which we feel is like really important and that is this wind up flashlight and the reason we've added this is because we noticed during the stress test that finding flashlights was a real problem when you first started playing the game and people were struggling to navigate around during the night. We don't want to sacrifice having dark nights because people can't play because they don't have lights. So we've implemented this wind up flashlight and we're thinking about giving it away as a starting item. And as you can see here, it's, it's super dim, it's almost useless but you'll be able to have a source of light which is renewable you can wind it up it will make a bunch of noise which will attract zombies and just generally be something that just allows you to play the game during the night during your first game night. you can see here that we just got jumped by a zombie uh, we did manage to kill him but that was a pretty close call all right guys i'm going to end this video here as always a massive thank you from myself and the team all of your ideas are fantastic. We love the contribution that you guys put in. If you did like the video, remember to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe. If you haven't already, come and join us on the forums in the Discord. We'd love to meet you. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.